Good morning and welcome. Today we are worshiping with you from the site of the Forget Me Not Project. The Forget Me Not Project, which was first created by Janet Edgar, Gary and Lori Piggott, Phil Bruton, and Scott Stevens, and the Congregation of Brigden United, in memory of Gary's parents, Ross and Mary Louise, is a 12-acre field donated by the Piggott family and dedicated to growing crops each year for the Canadian Food Grains Bank initiative. The Canadian Food Grains Bank is a faith-based, countrywide organization dedicated to the eradication of food insecurity and global hunger, and is rooted in the belief that it is God's desire that no person should ever go hungry. And every time I go for a drive through the country, I get so excited to see a Canadian Food Grains Bank sign that, like this one, that tells me that there are people who truly care and are working towards the eradication of global hunger. For, for 12 years, the Forget Me Not Project has provided a variety of crops that have helped feed people all around the world. With the generous support and donations of seeds, equipment and fertilizer from community members, as well as partnering with Grace United Church. The project has donated much over the years. The money raised is then matched four to one by the Government of Canada. So these 12 acres behind us go a very long way. Hey Deanna, from your vast farming knowledge, do you, do you happen to know what crop has been planted here this year? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> this year, we are growing soybeans. And when the crop is harvested, these soybeans will help with emergency food assistance, which has become very necessary due to climate change, conflict, natural disasters, and of course, the ongoing pandemic. Well, Deanna, now I know for sure. What's that, Carol? You really are outstanding in your field. <laughs> so as we begin our time together, we acknowledge the land upon which we are gathering and we give deep thanks for the land that has been and continues to be nurtured and cared for. We strive to uphold promises made by our ancestors that were so often forgotten and honor the land and the indigenous peoples who were and are the original keepers of the land. Today we also acknowledge as representatives of the United Church of Canada the role the United Church played in the residential school system and humbly live into the United Church's apology. We hold our Indigenous brothers and sisters in prayer with the news of another 215 children found in unmarked graves in Kamloops. May we be reminded that we are called to love and serve others, walking together with respect and creation. In the words of Indigenous Ministries, we pray for the families of these children and for all who love them and commit ourselves to the loving pursuit of the truth which will heal brokenness and lead to reconciliation with our neighborhood, our neighbors across this land. And for our call to worship today, we are from north and south, east and west. We are from tiny apartments and expansive homes. We are from cities and farms, some close to here and from others far away. And we are from big families and dinners made for one. We are from stages of grief and stages of love. We are from hot summers and cold winters. We are from kitchens with passed down recipes and front porches with old familiar swings. We are from soup kitchens and hungry bellies. We are from places of unrest and hearts riddled with fear. We are from the dust of the earth and the stars of the sky. We are from a lot of places, but today we are together. Holy One, gather us in. And now won't you please join us in singing our opening hymn from Voices United number 520, We Plow the Fields and Scatter.
Bible has a whole lot to say about the land, about farming, and about taking care of your neighbors and strangers too. Here are just a few verses that remind us of God's command to share what we have with others. From Isaiah 30, He will also send you rain for the seed you sow in the ground, and the food that comes from the land will be rich and plentiful. In that day, your cattle will graze in broad meadows. And from Hebrews 13, verse 16, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for that is pleasing to God. And also from James 2, verses 14 to 17, If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and you say to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and then you walk off without providing so much as a coat or a cup of soup, how is that helpful? What does that say about your faith? Isn't it obvious that God talk without God acts is just outrageous nonsense? Carol, did you know that the Forget Me Not project is just such a special project? By planting it on the Piggott's field, it reminds us to not forget the generations before us. And it also encourages us, encourages us to think about and act upon the many ways God calls us to be a part of the world and to help others by not forgetting that we are required, in the words of the prophet Micah, to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God and to follow Jesus' commandment to love our neighbor and the stranger as we care for ourselves. The Bible reflects often on how we are to be in the world, and that means loving God and loving and caring for and with all of humanity and creation too. Over 821 million people today don't have regular access to enough nutritious food to live healthily and active lives. Everyone should have enough to eat. Access to food is a basic human right, and global food systems ought to be about ensuring that everyone has enough to eat, no matter where they live and how they produce food. Unfortunately, climate change, conflict, growing inequality around the world, and now a pandemic, means that the most vulnerable people don't have enough food and that accessing food is becoming increasingly difficult for the most vulnerable. But our faith tells us that we have a part to play in creating a world with God, where all have access to nutritious and sustainable food sources, and none live with scarcity or food insecurity. So listen to these words from Isaiah 58 verses 7 to 8. Share your food with hungry people, Provide homeless people with a place to stay. Give naked people clothes to wear. Provide for the needs of your own family. Then the light of my blessing will shine on you like the rising sun. The United Church collaborates with the Canadian Food Grains Bank to address global hunger by providing food during humanitarian emergencies, as well as helping farmers feed themselves and their families through conservation agriculture. It's important to note that the United Church partners with people around and learns from them what the best way to help might be. That's very important, yeah. very important approach. Carol, perhaps we can also offer this prayer, which is posted on the Third Space website. It goes like this. Holy One, you are the restless wind of love that sweeps through the world. You blow where you will, breaking down barriers, stirring hearts to change, making all things possible. Tend within us restless desire for change, even change that seems impossible. Come, Spirit of God, sweep through our world bringing great change. May the harvest of your goodness bring justice and hope. And for us, transformation in our praying and living, so all may share in the harvest of your blessing. We go in peace to love as followers of Christ.
Amen. And now we would like to share with you a video entitled Common Strength, produced by the Canadian Food Brains Bank. No. The sort of classes. Like, when did you stay with so long ago? Well, he stayed with Mamak. My name is Colleen Dick, and I'm a farmer here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and also a business owner. I have an energy bar company that we have right here on the farm. There's Farming has been in my family's blood. So both my grandparents were farmers in this area, but my parents actually took off to Ontario and I grew up in Toronto. And I married a farmer and now I'm in love with the lifestyle. But it's so funny that I, I had fought against it for so long and then my, I just came back to my roots and it feels like home. Our life is crazy from May till freeze up. That's generally the, the verbiage that my husband likes to use. So as soon as the spring melt starts to happen, things get really antsy around here. We've got 14,000 acres that we have to get seeded and drained and, and prepared for the crop year. So there's a lot of moving parts. As far as being a woman in agriculture in Canada and value-added processing, which is my business, and then coupled with the farm, I feel like I don't know what I don't know. So it's all I've known. I feel really lucky. We've got a lot of rights here. Women can own land. Women can go out and get loans. We can do, we can do whatever we choose. And I guess I, I'm really interested to see what the limitations are for for another woman's reality and how that affects her. Mimi naitwa Lucy. Ni mimi ni mama wa watoto watano. Niko na mume. Na mimi ni mkulima. Na mimi pia ni mhudu maafya wa jamii. Na pia nafanya biashara. Usiana ambao niko nao kwa ardhi ni ya kwamba Inanipatia chakula kwa watoto na hata kwa mwanaume mwenyewe. Shambi inapokuwa mzuri, kikuza chakula mzuri, watoto pia wanakuwa vizuri kwa sababu nitatoa chakula shambani. Kuna tu faida katika vitu viwili. Shamba ikuze chakula, chakuli ikuze jamii. Mimi chenye nilifanya nikaanza kufanya ukulima ni ya kwamba nilitaka kujitegemea. Sikutaka kujita maskini, nilitaka kujitegemea na pia jamii yangu iwe kijitegemea. Zaidi ya mtu Mimi ni mwana, mwana afia, ambapo najua ya kwamba maneni alishe bora. Sasa hakuna venye naweza toka na niende niambie community about juu ya familia bora, juu ya alishe bora, na mimi kwangu mwenye watoto wangu wamiadhirika mwili zao. Sasa niliona kwamba nikifanya mfuano wa kwanza natangulia na mimi mwenyewe, jo nikitoka inji ya nikienda kufundisha wawe waweza kunisikiza, kusababu hakuna venye naweza ambia mutu fanya hivi na we mwenye kuwa kaufanya. Mgeni ambaye anakuja najua anatoka Canada na ninamfurahia na natarajia anapokuja nikaweze kujua mengi kuhisi jinsi anavyofanya kilimo na pia nataka kujua mengi kuhusu jamii yake na pia nataka urafiki na yeye As far as I'm going to visit um, this Kenyan farmer I know nothing I don't know anything about her her reality or economic situation when it comes to what does she plant, what does she grow, what are her her pest issues, what are her drought issues. So I have a feeling I am going to get an entire education and to contrast it with what I know about how we farm is going to be really interesting. Hello Colin, we are happy. Share more with you to know a lot about your family and our family. Thank you. Well, it was a 40 hour travel day. It felt extremely long, and so it just gave me so much time to be nervous and to think. So I had lots of thoughts happening about how I was going to interact with Lucy, was she going to like me, 
Was I going to fit in with the family? The travel from Nairobi to Busia is about 10, 11 hours. And so far we've been seeing some beautiful countryside, bustling towns, a rather large city, and I've just been taking it all in. It is just incredibly beautiful countryside, and I can't wait to get to Lucille. <laughs> I think what surprised me is that because of my nerves and because of my own internal fears, I didn't expect to feel so welcome right away. And I wasn't sure what I was walking into. I wasn't sure about any of the family dynamics. I wasn't sure what I was going to see. And I know I'm an emotional person and I didn't trust my face because it shows things when I don't want it to show things. Thank you for and Lucy was here. so warm and she was so almost protective of me as she like ushered me around and came everywhere with me. She was so sensitive. This is my cow shed. Okay. I guess I was expecting that I was going to have to do most of the the reaching out for some reason and I didn't because I, I guess I thought there would be more of a language barrier but she speaks amazing English when you want to open it you open it like this then you use and you put it on a colleen the limb fryer because I probably can't be going to come to the night you can't fry here Angala unilisikia vizuri yani nilikuwa na raha ndani ya moyo wangu. There's another one for tip it up that you you just <laughs> You're gonna see what is she doing to my water supply? Tukaenda naye kwa shamba la mboga. Alikuwa ananiulizia hizi vitu ukipanda zinatoka baada ya siku ngapi? Nikawa namwambia kwamba mbegu ya kundi inatoka baada ya siku tatu ambayo yeye hajawahi kuona mbegu yenye inaweza pandwa. I took a bad as you could to Alicuana Shanga. He planted this. So if you see, this one is for a long time. But this I planted. I think the most obvious okay, so common bond yes. that we had to begin with that kind of set the tone for our relationship as it continued and grew was definitely that we're both mothers. She works the land, she's a farmer. We both depend on the weather for our livelihoods. There's inherent risk that comes with that. Um, and I think that there's a certain courage and a certain steel stomach <laughs> that you need to be able to work in an industry that is so much of it is beyond your control. So we got up this morning, very early tea was being made. Uh, we had made chapatis the night before, so that was also in preparation. Like We had it for dinner, but it was also in preparation for the kids leaving early for school. So they could grab a chapati and they could also have their tea. And then we headed out to the garden with our hose, which I was really excited about because I'm a nerd for gardening. And I have a big garden at home. It's obviously not as big as Lucy's farm, but I, I spend my de-stressing time in there. When we were in the field, we were often talking about the soil and that there was now beginning to be earthworms on the side where she was practicing conservation agriculture. It's different soil. We're, we're gumbo, we're Red River gumbo. And this is a very different type of soil. And Lucy is so knowledgeable about her farm. I could ask her anything and she just could rattle off exactly what was happening. And it was fascinating. <laughs> it sounds like a squeaky, yeah. a squeaky wheel. <laughs> That's a <so> bad. <laughs> He's loud. I didn't even know that I didn't want to do my job. But I didn't want to do my job. 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 I didn't want Sio kama hizi zetu ndogo unaweza kutumia mkono na ukaweze kufanya. Na alifurahia kuifanya. So, 
collecting the water. We were walking and I was like, oh, this isn't even far. Like, this isn't far. This is beautiful. This is no big deal. And then we get down. It was gorgeous back there. And then we kind of went down Hi. past people's farms. And then we kind of went down this beautiful valley, small valley, and then to the water. When we started filling up the containers, that's when I was like, how heavy does that get? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so heavy. Okay. I was like, oh my goodness, there's a very good reason they gave me the small one. I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to lift it on top of my head. And then I saw Lucy oh, take back. hers, which was double what mine was. And she's like, whoop. Lucy. And she oh could just goodness. walk. And she's like, I'm relaxed. And I'm like, I am not relaxed. <laughs> it was so hard. And my neck was screaming and my arms were tired. I'm like, Lucy, my arms are tired. And she's laughing. She's like, your arms are tired already? And I'm like, I didn't even know if I was going to make it. And I wasn't even sure my arms were going to work to get it off my head when I got back. But I didn't spill. I had a new appreciation for water conservation. Not wasting it. So how many times do you... Do you go, or do the children go in a day? Several times. Several times? Yes, because we, where we need, there we need water. Yeah. Everything is almost water. Yeah, everything, everything. you do <laughs> yes. needs it. When you don't have running water, when you don't have all the modern conveniences, the most basic act of preparing breakfast and preparing lunch and preparing dinner and just cleaning up after that takes an incredible part of your day just to do the basics and so I just kept thinking wow if I had to live this out back home how on earth would I run my business how would I have time to spend the time with my kids that I consider quality time I'm noticing here your quality time is all the time you're cleaning together, you're making it quality time, you're cooking together, you're rolling out chapatis together, and you're making those times, because they take so much time, quality time. At home, we often have excess of water issues, and here it's, it's quite opposite. So all, all week, we were looking at the sky, and I was like, oh, is that rain? And she knew, she can tell just by looking, no, that's not gonna happen. And even that afternoon, because it happened during the day and because the wind was so strong, she knew that wasn't enough. What was happening in that moment, it was good, but it wasn't enough to justify planting. She needed two more solid, slow soakers, is what we call it at home, in order to have enough to plant. So in that moment, in my ignorance, I was excited for her, because I'm like, it's raining, she can plant. And she was like, don't get so excited. I'm, I'm, she's not counting her chickens before they've hatched. After the rains continued and there was finally enough to justify the planting, it was uh, the Chama group came, the one that Lucy is the trainer of trainers. And it was so neat to watch her in outside of her family environment where she's a community leader she's looked up to and you see them how much respect they have for her she calls the shots she knows how to direct everyone i saw her be her powerful woman self and it was beautiful to watch hakuna venye mimi nitafanya sie na jamii yangu wenye wako karibu na mimi hawajui maneno ya sie kwa hivyo hiyo ndimefanya nimeweza kufanya kikundi na pia tunaweza kulimiana kufanya kazi pamoja na pia tunaweza kuwezekeza pamoja na pale pia ndio mimi natoa mafundisho yangu na na nawafundisha kwa sababu ile ndio kikundi changu sasa cha nyumbani hiyo wakati before i answer si ye yani maisha yake ilikuwa tu ile ya kawaida because mavuno unajua ilikuwa kidogo inafika wakati hana chakula sasa inabidi ni lazima anunue lakini alipoanza si ye mavuno ikawa imeongezeka sasa sahi haendi kwa soko kununua hata ingaje sahi ndio chakula hakuna kwa watu lakini yeye ako na chakula na hiyo ndio ilinifurahisha na hii project ina imewekwa mama pamoja mama ameanzisha pesa kama ameanzisha mradi ya kuweka pesa kwa mesa 
inaitwa table banking ni naona hata huyu mama ambaye ni uko mama yake Lucy huyu amekuwa role model iko mama iko mama jirani zake wanakuja kufanya nini kujifunza kutoka kwake eh kwa sababu ile video nafanya kwa shamba lake inaonekana practically kwa kwa shamba the joy of mo moving your body and singing as a group and watching just the beauty of it and then feeling weird because it was to welcome me which is just so kind was amazing very closely followed by that emotion was fear as i can't dance and i can't move my body in a way that makes sense to any beat and i knew i was going to have to try and i was beside the best guy and he noticed my feet were doing the wrong thing and he kept like looking at me and like do you see what's happening here lady it's the same every time take that same foot and put it back so i tried really hard i lost it a bunch of times and i you kind of you're off again and then he'd kind of like put his foot out extra for me it was really kind <laughs> but it's it's what a way to celebrate someone coming into your meeting it's made me take pause and think about the way that i honor visitors in my own home and in my own community and in my own business so these are all community leaders in their own right coming together for their own personal accountability for their own um education so they had a meeting where they they brought their their share money where they were either buying a share or they were paying their interest or they were taking a loan and i got to watch that amongst the leaders and then there was um an educational component where they were learning about gross margin and timing of their cash flow and i got to sit in on that it was so impressive pia katika hiko kikundi tukaona ni vyema tunaweza kujifanyia vitu kama kusaidiana kwa shida kwa raha na pia kufanya biashara ndipoza unaona kwamba tiotis wengi kama saizi wengi wanafanya biashara tusiwe tunategemea tu njia moja ya ku kilimo peke yake ku, kuweza ku, kupata ma, mapato ya, yetu ya kukidhi mahitaji yetu I can usually have my presence of mind pretty clear in any situation but then when it came time for chicken time I had zero control over my entire body and emotional state I've never killed anything before So I found it really hard to eat the chicken later that day. I had one little bite and it all I could taste was fear. I think I projected that onto that chicken. So <laughs> it was a, quite an emotional experience <laughs> to say the least. I didn't expect going to the market to have the same effect on me as killing the chicken almost. Well, I felt seen. <laughs> and I'm not used to feeling that. So there's that. And I and I know people were curious and looking and watching and poor Lucy was getting so many questions. Do you know how kids look? But if I tried to take myself out of that like self-conscious space, being in the market was super cool. Tulivyoenda sokoni alifurahia. Na kawa ananiambia kwamba uko kwao. Soko ya chakula ni ya chakula tu. Sio kama huko kwetu soko ya chakula unapata iko na chakula, iko na viatu wameweka pale, mangozi kila kitu mangui iko pale. I think for Lucy personally, the impact of the support from this project gives her first of all a, some space. It gives her some space so that she can do what she needs to do instead of just concentrating on the basics. She can she has the tools now so that she can work the land in a different way. She's got a support network so that she can do things more efficiently and effectively so that she can then have time to go to training. She has time it's creating space for her to learn new techniques 
to involve herself in the community in a different way, to not just have to put her head down and keep her eyes on her own. She can look up. It gives her the ability to look up and look around and be a leader like she's become in this community, so well respected. And I think that's the biggest opportunity there is you, it's given her space to become what she needs to become. I think she's a role model to not only her own community, she's a role model to me now. So I'm gonna take that with me back to Canada. Also to you. <laughs> oh, it was good. <laughs> also to you. <laughs> we had some funny, yes. funny laughs. Yes. <laughs> and some good talks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are. It is good. <laughs> yeah, it is good. Mm. <laughs> it is good. Mm. <sighs> yeah, I appreciate it a lot. Me too. A lot to meet you even. You. <laughs> a lot to know a lot about your family, to know a lot about your work, the way you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's we have different lives for yes. sure. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of reasons why we're the same. Yes, that is true. If I could speak to Lucy in her mother tongue, I think I would tell her that her sacrifices are seen. They are seen they are logged, they're appreciated, they're not gone unnoticed. The times that she keeps quiet when she wants to speak, the times when she lets someone else take the lead, when she's completely capable of taking the lead, they're seen. And it's nothing she's gonna get a trophy for <laughs> in this life but another woman sees it and has so much respect for the fact that she doesn't go after, go after praise, she doesn't go after recognition. She does it because it's the right thing to do and it's nothing you get glory for and it's constant. And she does it with a happy heart and it's impressive. And if I could speak her mother tongue, I would tell her that. Please join us in singing our next hymn from Voices United, number 600, When I Needed a Neighbor.
And won't you hear this affirmation of faith? We believe that bread comes from grain that grows in the wind and the rain with the farmer's help far from the eyes of city folk. We believe that bread comes from love, the love of God, the love of the farmer, the love of the baker's hands, the love of those who bring it to us. We believe that bread can be and should be broken and shared and given to all persons until all have enough and then some. We believe the Spirit is calling us to help all people in Jesus' compassionate name. Amen. Amen. If you would like to donate to the Forget Me Not Grow Project for the Canadian Food Grains Bank, bring in friends, please mark on your offering envelope or on your check memo line, Forget Me Not Project, and how much you would like to donate toward this very special Canadian Food Grains Bank project or contact the church office. For our Sprucedale and Providence folks, if you would like to donate to the Canadian Food Grains Bank, we will be receiving donations all through the month of June. So please note on your envelope or check memo line CFGB with the amount you would like to give. And our treasurer, Susan, will pass it on to the Canadian Food Grains Bank on your behalf. So please join us in our seeding prayer. Receive these seeds, signs of the power you have to join with God as stewards of the earth, as people who plant in the soil of the earth and in the soil of our words and our deeds. I have invited some of our church members to plant seeds for us today. But I invite each of you to offer some words about how you might care for the land that receives the seeds and also how you might sow seeds of words and actions to further bless the world around you. So let us pray. We sow this seed in God's good earth. Trusting in the promise of hope. We sow this seed in God's good earth. Trusting in the promise of abundant life for all. We sow the seed in God's good earth. Trusting in the gift of life for all. We sow the seed in God's good earth. Trusting in the possibility of compassion for all. <laughs> Trusting in the assurance of faith that the dream of God is possible for a creation that is blessed and named good. We sow the seed in God's good earth. Praying for all who care for the land, for all who produce the food that feeds the earth. We sow the seed in God's good earth. Sorry. Praying for a just sharing of the abundance that is part of God's creation.
now may you receive this blessing. May the strength of the wind, the light of the sun, and the softness of the rain, and the mystery of the moon greet you and fulfill you. May beauty delight you and happiness uplift you. May wonder fulfill you and love surround you. May your step be steady and your arm be strong. May your heart be peaceful and your word be true. May you seek to learn and may you learn to live. May you live to love and may you love always. Amen. Amen. We would love to have you join us uh, a little later this morning at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning, June 6th, to join us for a virtual soup luncheon with our friends at Brigden United and Grace United in Sarnia uh, to discuss further the good works of the Canadian Food Grains Bank and to hear a little more about the Forget-Me-Not project. So please check your email for the Zoom invite that you can click on to attend. We hope to see you there. Thanks. This afternoon, you have another opportunity to join the wider church virtually as our regional council celebrates their affirming ministries. Uh, we have been designated as an affirming ministry. And so you are invited to join us today online from two to three, and uh, we will celebrate this important milestone. Uh, the Zoom link is in the uh, slide following and will also be included uh, with the links to worship today. So please look for that Zoom link and we hope to see you there as well. Thanks. <music>